In order to investigate the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis, we're first of all going to need to isolate some chloroplasts. The method we're going to use is relatively straightforward. It doesn't give a super pure pre chloroplast preparation, but it's good enough for this experiment. First of all, we'll start with a leaf and we'll grind it up in a pestle and mortar in a 1.5% sucrose buffer. Grinding the material will break down the cell wall and the cell membrane and release the chloroplasts. The sucrose buffer is isotonic to the chloroplasts, i.e. it's got the same osmotic potential so there'll be no net movement of water in or out of the chloroplasts and they'll stay intact. Once we've ground it, we'll then filter out the cell wall debris just using some muslin and then we'll centrifuge the extract down at 3000 uh, revolutions per minute for 5 minutes. Centripetal forces means that the denser components of the cell, including the chloroplasts, will collect in a pellet at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. After centrifuging, we'll then pour the supernate into whey and resuspend the pellet to get a nice chloroplast extract. Before we do the actual biochemical experiments, we're going to need to check how dense the chloroplast preparation is. If there are too many chloroplasts, then the reaction will happen too quickly for us to observe, but if there aren't enough chloroplasts, then the reaction will be too slow to be visible. We could count the density of chloroplasts under the microscope, but it's much easier to use the chlorophyll concentration of that extract as an indicator of how many chloroplasts there are likely to be. Chlorophyll is contained within proteins inside the thylakoid membrane, so it's much more soluble in organic solvents than it is in water. To extract the chlorophyll, we'll add a small volume of the chloroplast to an 80% acetone solution. This will solubilize the membranes and release the chlorophyll. We'll then do a quick spin in the centrifuge to remove any protein impurities and then measure the concentration of the chlorophyll in a spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer measurement relies on the fact that chlorophyll directly absorbs light. If we shine a light through the sample, we can compare the amount of light going into the sample, which we call the incident light, with the amount coming out of the sample, called the transmitted light. A more concentrated chlorophyll solution will absorb more light, so there'll be a bigger difference between the intensity of the incident and the transmitted light. The ratio of these measurements is used to define an absorbance value, which we'll actually just read directly from the spectrophotometer. Before measuring the absorbance of the chlorophyll sample itself, we're going to need to define zero on the spec and also tell it which wavelength of light to measure at. Chlorophyll absorbs strongly in the red range, so we're going to use a wavelength of 652 nanometers. We'll set the spec to this wavelength and then put a solution of 80% acetone into the machine. We know this doesn't contain any chlorophyll, so we can define that as zero. This cuvette of acetone is referred to as a blank, and every time you set a new wavelength on the spec, you need to re-zero it with a new blank solution. Once we've checked the chlorophyll content of your extract is suitable for use, we can then move to the biochemical assay part of the experiment, which I've described in another video.